Hello and welcome back to Randomized Gaming. I am once again your host for this video, Random Gamer Riven, and in today's Now Playing Video Volume 3, we are going to be looking at the Lost Planet game we guarantee you haven't played. So unless you are a hardcore Japanese gamer, we doubt very much you've played this title. And the game in question is EX Troopers and it probably in our opinion is actually the best game in the Lost Planet series and it's a real tragedy that Capcom didn't localize it for the western market. Now just before I go any further I'm just going to quickly say that we have tweaked the now playing formula for these videos so this will be around 10 to 15 minutes going forward for any future videos. I'm looking back at the previous two they were way way too long. EX Troopers was released in Japan in November 2012 and was released on both the Nintendo 3DS and the PlayStation 3. Now the Nintendo 3DS is the portable version as you'd expect it does come with a bit of a graphical downgrade but it does feature augmented reality card support that wasn't present in the PlayStation 3 version. The PlayStation 3 version does however have trophies and an online multiplayer that's not present in the 3DS version. The first big question if you played any of the other Lost Planet games is how closely does it play in comparison to them? Well it plays in many ways similar to the original Lost Planet but it does feature a number of changes that make it quite a different game in that respect. Overall I actually prefer EX Troopers as it's a much more faster paced arcade game than the original Lost Planet. Whereas Lost Planet featured quite long drawn out missions, EX Troopers is broken up into much more smaller bite sized missions. Primarily this bite sized format is designed to support the Nintendo 3DS version but it actually works as a way to give both experienced and beginner players a nice breather between each and every mission as you can go and visit a hub section in the academies after every mission and here you can level up, upgrade your weapons or just practice existing missions and battle acreage in the virtual center. It actually makes for a far more enjoyable game with a lot more replay value than the original Lost Planet as the original Lost Planet just threw you from one mission to the next and there was nowhere to recuperate or recover before going for the next mission. With the game featuring over 20 weapons, there's a huge variety of playing styles for the various different types of players to really get familiar with and decide which weapons you like and which weapons you don't like. Also the weapons have a lightning fire electricity trilogy system where each one is strong to and weak to a various different elements. Meaning that unlike previous Lost Planet games there is a slight element of planning as taking the wrong weapons into battle can mean you could be spending a lot more time fighting the acrids than you could do otherwise. Unlike Lost Planet the shooting is much more target based focused so very reminiscent of Zelda in some ways with the sort of later lock on system they did. It's still good fun but it does mean in combat you tend to often target one enemy and concentrate on that enemy till you finish them. Of course you can change targets at any point and sometimes I find you need to in order to adapt to the various situations but while often I find yourself drawn to the larger acreage I do tend to end up dealing with the mobs first before tackling the more larger enemies. Added to this the main player character Bren Tanner also has a boost system on his back which means you can turbo dash everywhere. You can also use this to dodge and perfectly timing dodge means you get a super shot in retaliation so knowing where and when to dodge is key if you want to make light work of some of the acreids. All of this makes for a much more versatile combat system than the one seen in the original Lost Planet. Perhaps the biggest change is to how the mecha system works. As this is much more small mission based you can't just jump in and out of mechs. In this time round your main mech is called Jinjiro and he's a sort of super souped up very much anime design style mech and you can only play as him when the mission allows you. There will be no jumping in and out of him during a mission which is one of the few things I missed from the original Lost Planet. All in all the game is very polished unlike the original title and overall I find the combat much better balanced and far more enjoyable. Indeed I was able to quickly put 30 plus hours into the game without even remotely breaking a sweat and I found it far more enjoyable to play in long bursts than I did the original Lost Planet. It's fair to say the hub system works really well and the coming back to explore locations and being able to upgrade your weapons really gives you a sense of progression. There's something quite nice about doing one mission in a VR and getting your ass handed to you, getting some upgrades and level ups and coming back and then being able to absolutely rock that mission in record time. 
the next big question I need to ask for this look at EX Troopers, and before I go on to the graphics and the visuals, we need to talk about how pliable is it if the game is in Japanese. Well, of course, there's no fan translation at present, and you certainly can't apply a patch to the PS3 version via any sort of current system. It is, however, very visually led with all the cues for where you need to go next, and nine times out of ten you can pretty much figure out everything you need to know. There are one or two guides on the internet as well if you're getting stuck, but overall the visual giant exclamation mark you get over the critical missions or the buttons they tell you to highlight and like read the mails, it's all very heavily driven. And though I can't read a word of Japanese, I've been able to play through the game without any issue. Generally, if you're like me and like to explore every nook and cranny of the game, you'll push the story forward very easily. If you're someone who doesn't like to just chat to random NPCs and stuff, then you might find there's a few trickier bits. I know it's one or two bits I did have to talk to all the various students around one of the classes in one bit in order to figure out what to do. But other than that, usually you just follow the exclamation mark. It's not hugely difficult. Again, the only thing you need to keep your eye on is the names for like the items you need to pick up from the enemies. The, they're actually all in the bestibulary, so if you keep an eye out, it does tell you the name of the monster and the items they drop, and from there you can work out which monsters you need to defeat in order to get various upgrade items. Certainly you do need a good visual memory at points, but nothing too undeserving. There's no tricky puzzle quests here, it's all very much defeat the enemies and move on to the next mission. I've actually waded through Japanese RPGs without being able to understand a word of Japanese and I found this very, very easy to play through in comparison to some of them. Visually, EX Troopers looks fantastic. The art direction is superb. They clearly went for a style, and that is a shell-shaded comic book look, and it looks brilliant even today. I mean, we're sort of five years after release, and this looks as good as a PS4 or an Xbox One game. It looks stunning. The stylization is beautiful, nice, bright, bold colours, and everything is designed to look like a comic book, from the cutscenes, which are all designed to look like the comic book panels, to when you defeat and fight enemies and shoot as you watch words coming out of the page. It's very reminiscent of the old Batman Pal Gazam in some aspects, but not quite as tongue-in-cheek there, but it's all beautifully done. The art style looks fantastic and it has already aged vastly better than the three other Lost Planet games. This is definitely a game in 10 years time you'll still say this looks fantastic for a 3D game unlike some of the other Lost Planet titles. A lot of the feel of the fun comes from the art style and it's credit to the artist who actually did a lot of the character artwork, Chaito Maita. Uh, she did a fantastic job of a lot of the artwork, and you can clearly see that with how it was translated in-game. It all looks beautiful, as they clearly took the comic book style of her artwork and then just translated it into game. This just looks stunning. Sound-wise, it's your traditional Capcom stuff. There is some J-pop there. Not too bad, though, mainly for the intro songs. Predominantly, it's all sort of upbeat, happy stuff. And I'm kind of reminded very much of Fantasy Star Online as a lot of this game does feel like it was inspired both visually and audio as well by Fantasy Star Online. Indeed, somehow the quest play as well, very, very similar. Um, admittedly, Fantasy Star Online did have a huge impact on Japanese gaming, everything from Monster Hunter to various other series have clearly been heavily, heavily inspired and based upon it, and I think this is one game that does draw elements on from it, which is a really good thing as Fantasy Star Online was a fantastic game. So I suppose I should just also explain a bit about the story. You play Brentana, they pronounce it, although it's spelt Brentana. There is a whole host of characters. You quickly meet Walter Stingray, who's your teacher from Advanced Base, and he helps you as you try and fend off in the opening cutscene a very of pirates' attacks on the arriving students. You rapidly meet the various other students in the form of Luna Forest, who is effectively your wingman throughout most of the game. Julie Fisher, and then the other key characters such as Tika from the, the local tribes who at first you're looking to rescue and then later on she becomes a key player. You also have Chris Lambard who is your rival and he doesn't join you too late onto the game but eventually he does aid you along with plenty of other characters from the various background characters such as Yuno, Max and Ayn from the various academies. There's a very much novel and interesting cast in each of their own novelties. The story itself basically follows Bren's 
time out to the various three different academies. There is, of course, as you'd expect, an antagonist, and that turns out to be primarily the headmaster of the whole Nevex system, Chris Ravel. So as you can guess, it's a very much tongue-in-cheek, a traditional school sort of base story. So there is plenty much of Bren and his friends getting up to all sorts of shenanigans like the one you're seeing here where they imply some sort of swim co I'm not entirely sure. I think they imply some sort of swimsuit costume and they think they're going to be able to convince all the girls to appear in swimsuits. They end up doing the mission where it's just them in the swimsuits and all the girls watching on kicking their ass, basically. There's your usual high shenanigans you expect the sort of school things. Of course, the story does become more serious as the villains start revealing themselves. And while the plot isn't quite as serious as the original Lost Planet, it's certainly a lot more fun. And I do feel the characters are much better explained and given a lot more depth in EX Troopers. The original Lost Planet didn't give you a huge amount of depth for many of the characters. Whereas this, because it's a much bigger game in many ways, especially in terms of storytelling, you get a lot more depth to all the various characters. And you certainly feel much more attached to them than I did any of the characters in the original Lost Planet. Certainly, at least from the visual style, even if you can't speak or understand Japanese that well, the visual style shows and portrays the characters really well, and you will quickly come to learn to like them and hate them accordingly. All in all, EX Troops is a very well put together game, and at the minute it's fairly cheap to pick up. It's fantastic to play, and I find it the, probably the best game in the entire Lost Planet series, and it's a real shame it didn't get a Western release. Indeed, Lost Planet 3 that came afterwards is absolute garbage in comparison. It's a real shame they didn't release this instead of Lost Planet 3. I suspect it would have sold better. Bizarrely, the reason we probably didn't get EX Troopers is despite the fact the game was fairly Japanese designed, I can't help feeling it played very westernized in many aspects. And sadly, the game actually bombed on release in Japan, selling a pretty dismal number of units. I think the last count, there's something like 30,000 sold on both platforms. I think probably now more about 50,000 total, but not a huge number when you consider how many copies they made. The game's fairly cheap to pick up and this might be one that sees its value rise in the future, but this really is a good game. If you like Capcom's old style of games, if you like shooters, if you enjoyed the first Lost Planet, you will certainly enjoy this. If you didn't like the second or third Lost Planet, you're probably likely more to enjoy this as this is a vastly better game. This is really good fun. There is an online mode in the PS3 version, although I have heard it lags pretty badly. But it's a really good game and one that I think any Lost Planet fan or any PlayStation 3 fan who fancies something sort of fast paced in short bursts on third person view, this should be something you should consider picking up. It is region 3 on the PlayStation 3, so it's certainly well worth tracking down. And the fact you can probably get it for around £20 means it'll be an absolute steal. I'm already 40 hours into playing it and I find it a really, really good game. Well worth your time, well worth playing, and again, real shame this didn't see release. That's all for now, thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow Randomised Gaming. Oh, and please do, if you want to get all our notifications, kick that little bell button. There's been a lot of people complaining of late that um, YouTube's algorithm has been shortchanging a lot of people with uh, actually viewing videos. So please do click that bell button if you want to see all our videos because otherwise it will only give you selected ones for the notifications. But if you like our content, please do rebug this. Please do share this and please do get the word out. Thank you for watching and if you really like this game, please do let us know as well in the comments if you watched this video, picked it up and then subsequently really enjoying this game. I am Random Gamer Ribbon and it's my time to sign out for now.